Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss uh, the problems from tutorial 2. So this uh, tutorial mainly involves uh, problems from simultaneous reactions and essentially opposing and consecutive reaction. So we start with the question number one. So it's a numerical problem given an opposing reaction where K equilibrium is given as one and uh, it's also given that X, the concentration of B at 100 seconds is 0 0.25 mole and uh, A means the initial concentration is 0 0.5 mole and the question asks to find K1, okay? So let's approach this problem with the usual manner that at t is equal to 0 we have a 0 and at time t a minus x and x and at equilibrium this is a minus xe and this is xe. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to find k1. So that means we have to find the relationship between k1 and k2 with respect to uh, connecting with x and t. So once we form the equation x is given, t is given and then we can try to find out k1 plus k2 and some other relationship is given. So from there, we can easily find out individually k1 and k2. So therefore, we can say that dx dt, the rate of formation of product, is k1 a minus x minus k2x. Or this can be written as k1a minus x multiplied by k1 plus k2. Now at equilibrium, uh, we have dx dt is equal to 0 and this gives me that k1a is equal to x k1 plus k2. So therefore, if this is my equation 1, so if we put this value of k1a is equal to here, so we can write that from equation 1, we get uh, dx dt is equal to uh, k1 plus k2 multiplied by x e minus x. All right. So or we have dx over x e minus x is equal to k1 plus k2 multiplied by dt. So if we integrate that, so all integration uh, from t is equal to zero to t, um, and uh, uh, integrating and by putting the conditions other conditions we can find out the constant of integration and from that we can find out that uh, this would be the final integrated form is equal to natural log of x e over x e minus a sorry Yeah. So, uh, sorry, this is X, yes. So, uh, this is our final uh, integrated form. So, we have successfully established a uh, relationship between K1 and K2 and uh, with uh, T and X, all right? So therefore, uh, how to find out K1 and K2? So to find it out, of course, we need to find out the value of Xe. So how we can uh, frame out the value of Xe? So we can actually uh, take a hint from there that, okay, first of all, since K equilibrium is one, so that tells me that K1 is equal to K2. So since K1 is equal to K2, we can change that K1 plus K2 should be equal to twice of k1. So we have to find k1. So we can simplify that twice of k1. And also, what we can uh, derive that k equilibrium is equal to the equilibrium concentration of product divided by the equilibrium concentration of uh, the reactant. So this is equal to 1. Or uh, we have to solve for xc. So here a is uh, what is the value of A. So uh, A is, I'm sorry, A is 1 molar, it is not 0.5 molar. Please excuse me. 
uh, if you can check the question, A is given as 1 molar. So therefore, uh, we have Xe is equal to 1 minus Xe, or we can simply rewrite Xe is equal to 0.5 molar. So if we can plot uh, right here, 0.5 and given x at 100 seconds is equal to 0.25. So this thing becomes is equal to or 2k1 is equal to, so t is 100, 100, and natural log of xe is equal to 0.5. So 0.5 divided by uh, 0.5 minus 0.25, so it becomes 0.25. So this is 2, so natural log of 2. So or k1 is equal to uh, natural log of 2 divided by 200 and its time is second so it will be unit is second inverse okay so uh, the answer is natural log of 2 divided by 200 second inverse so you can uh, try it out yourself and verify and the answer okay so let's move on to the second question so this is our uh, problem number two. We have a consecutive reaction. Red constants are K1 and K2. And what is given that K1 is 10 raised to the power negative 5 second inverse and K2 is 10 raised to the power 5 second inverse. And it's also given that the initial concentration C0 is 0 0.025 molar. And we have to find out the rate that is DC3 dt at T is equal to 100. So how to approach this thing? So obviously one way you, you can do is uh, you can derive the expression for uh, dc3 dt uh, right from the beginning that involving all those uh, b expressions. Okay, But let me tell you this question may come uh, with one or two marks. So that means it can be regarded as an objective type question. So therefore uh, there must be a smart way without going into the detailed derivation. So, but what should be the smart way? So the smart way is, the answer is given here. So here you see that K1 is much, much less than K2. So if since K1 is much, much less than K2, uh, as we have seen earlier during the lectures, we can safely apply the approximation of steady state okay so uh, once we apply the approximation of steady state so we can tell that dc2 dt which is actually k1 c1 minus k2 c2 uh, that and also it becomes k1 c0 e to the power minus k1 t since it's a first order decay uh, minus k2 c2 uh, is equal to zero Okay, so at the steady state, assuming C2 is an intermediate, or um, we can write that K2C2 is equal to K1C0 e to the power minus K1T. Now the question asks, what is my DC3 dt? So if we look at the equation, the DC3 dt is nothing but K2C2. So that is equal to K1C0 e to the power minus K1T. And it asks me to find out DC3 dt at t is equal to 100 second. So we are going to put t is equal to 100 second and we have k1 so and the k1 value is 10 raised to the power negative second inverse and c0 is given there 0 0.025 more so once you plug in those values you can easily get to the answer okay so just verify it yourself whether you, you can get to the final answer I'm not writing it here so please uh, calculate yourself and uh, match uh, with your classmates. Okay, so now let's move on to the next question, question number three. So the question number three deals with a consecutive reaction again. So A going to B going to C and the two red constants are given. So from the first look, let's try to understand that these red constants are almost comparable with each other. And uh, we do not, uh, we, we are unable to cancel uh, one with respect to other. Because the hint is given here, it asks to find the maximum concentration of B. So the maximum concentration of B appears 
uh, in two situations that when uh, uh, k1 uh, is uh, much much better than k2 or uh, when k1 and k2 are comparable okay so anyway we will approach this problem from a systematic point of view first we have to understand that for a situation like this so a starts to decay uh, with a high rate and b forms at a faster rate then afterwards when c starts to form slowly b starts to decay all right so uh, what happens is that b achieves a maximum value here and it asks c to find the time t so what we do actually, we have to derive this expression for C2. So uh, this type of problem, if it comes, uh, it will come with some heavy mass like 4 or 5. So therefore, uh, you have to derive this expression. And remember, in no way, we want you to memorize these expressions. So either you can apply, some <coughs> apply the steady state uh, approximation wherever required, and you can directly find uh, the dc 3 dt whatever by bypassing this derivation. But in other cases, uh, you will see the question will contain appropriate mass weightage, and you have to derive the, these expressions wherever required. So uh, let's assume that we have successfully derived this expression, and once we have derived, we have to show, we have to find out the max, the, uh, the time t where c2 maximizes, that means we have to find out the first derivative and send it to zero, okay, and solve for t. So if we do that, we will find out that the final expression for t would come out something like this, where you only have to plug in the values of k1 and k2, all right? And you please uh, do that and find out the time t. So uh, once again, I'm not uh, writing out uh, uh, the final answer. So uh, you verify uh, with each other. Okay, so let, let's move on to the question. So in question number four, we have the decomposition of ozone. So it's a multi-state reactions. And the question asks you, assuming the steady state approximation, prove that the reaction follows first order kinetics at the very high concentration of ozone. Now, remember, that whenever you have these kind of problems, if the question asks you to assume steady state approximation, definitely will do. But if nothing is mentioned, then you can state that assuming steady state approximation, because there is an intermediate. And in order to get rid of uh, the intermediate from the final expression, uh, the best way to apply uh, the, uh, the steady state approximation. So if the question mention, mentions that you don't apply steady state or apply something in the concept of pre-equilibrium, then it's a different story. But if the question says uh, you apply steady state or that it just says uh, steady silent, doesn't say anything, we can safely assume. Uh, the concept of steady state. So therefore, uh, first we have to write the expression for uh, minus do 3 dt that is the reaction. So the red law uh, becomes minus do 3 dt is equal to A1O3 uh, minus K2O2 multiplied by O and also minus uh, so we have already taken minus do 3 dt, so this is decomposition, so it, it should be the plus sign plus K3O multiplied by O3. Okay, so this we have to prove that it follows a partial kinetics, but before that we have the intermediate atomic oxygen appearing. So we have to get rid of by applying the steady state approximation. So therefore, we now have to find out do dt. So later on, we would set that to zero. So do dt is equal to uh, k1. So we can find out do dt uh, is equal to uh, k1 o3 uh, minus k2 o2 multiplied by o and minus k3 o multiplied by o3. Uh, all right, okay, yes, 
So now what we're going to do is we can set it DODD is equal to zero. So at steady state, our applying steady state approximation, we can find out that K103 is equal to, so we can take O common and we can have K2 in O2 uh, plus K3 O3. Okay, so or we can find that O is equal to K1 O3 divided by A2 O2 plus K3 O3. So this is the expression for atomic oxygen and we are going to plug that value over here and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so let's clean the board and uh, do it. Okay, so we have just put in the value of O uh, here, okay, and uh, we have found this uh, expression. So the next step is simply add all the terms. So if we add all the terms, we have uh, K2O2 plus K3O3 uh, at the denominator, and the numerator becomes K1, K2 multiplied by O3, O2, uh, plus K1, K3 multiplied by O3, O3, and uh, then we also have minus K2, K1, O2, O3, and we have plus K1, K3, O3, O3. So if we look at here, that uh, K1, K2, O3, O2, and minus K2, K1, O2, O3, uh, that two cancels out. And finally, we have two K1, K3, O3, O3, divided by K2, O2, plus K3, O3. So if we look at the expression at very high value of O3, that means when O3 is extremely high, we can safely neglect this part K2O2. So therefore, at very high ozone concentration, this becomes is equal to 2 K1 A3 O3 O3 divided by K3 O3. And you see, this part cancel out and this becomes equal to 2 K1 multiplied by O3. So this is indeed a first order kinetics uh, the decomposition of ozone follows the first order kinetics first order with respect to O3 at very high concentration of ozone so this is the typical way we approach these problems so there are a lot of steps we have to remember that we are doing each and every step correctly all right so let's move on to the question number five where I will give you some hints and it's your turn to solve question number five because it is uh, very similar to question number four. So question number five talks about a reaction, overall reaction, and it gives you two options, mechanism A and mechanism B. And then it gives you a hint. The hint is the entire reaction is observed to follow a second order kinetics with respect to NO when the hydrogen concentration is extremely high. And it asks you to pick the correct mechanism. So the hint uh, was uh, exactly whatever we used for question number four. So that means, so nothing is written. So therefore, uh, we can apply the steady state approximation. So that means we can write that, let's assume the steady state approximation is being applied on the intermediate. So you have to find out the intermediate. So intermediate is NOH to here and N2O to here. So there are two different intermediates. So therefore in one case A means in left side, you use DNOH to DT is equal to zero and solve it. And here you said DN2O to DT is equal to zero and solve it. So therefore, left side, you will have a red expression. Okay, and also right side, you will also have a red expression. So then, you see, either of the two will comply to this condition. So whichever mechanism complies to this uh, 
condition so that would be your correct mechanism so uh, please uh, try it out uh, exactly the way I have shown you to solve question number four and I'm very sure you will have uh, absolutely no problem to get the uh, answer correct answer for question number five okay so uh, I think we have covered almost all of the uh, problems given in the as the tutorial uh, problems uh, but uh, there was one problem though uh, supposed to be solved in tutorial one uh, we have not done it there because uh, it contained the chain reaction uh, this is the Bollenstein mechanism of formation of HBr uh, and uh, it requires some special attention uh, uh, for the derivation and uh, the associated problem. So therefore, uh, we will uh, address uh, that problem as a separate tutorial problem uh, in our uh, as our next uh, discussion. Okay. So here we are finally uh, to talk about the Bodenstein uh, mechanism for formation of hydrogen bromide gas. And this is a free radical chain reaction. So these steps are known to you. I have already shared with you. And we have to show that DHBR DT is equal to such complex red expression. So you can see that the order is really complex. Okay, so we have to derive that. So uh, First, start with uh, our basic uh, expression for DHBR DT, and then gradually we will uh, apply uh, the approximation of steady state. Okay, so let's uh, do it. So I have to erase this part, and we have to start afresh uh, from this part. So I have written the DHBR DT expression. So I have also written that before. Uh, in my previous video lectures. So now, there are the intermediates BR dot and H dot and uh, we are going to apply the approximation of steady state, so I'm not writing it here, on the two intermediates BR dot and H dot. So therefore, we are going to find D BR dot DT. So if you do that, then uh, you should be able to find out some expression like this. But remember, very important things, that there is a factor 2 and there is a factor 2 here. So this comes from that stoichiometric uh, factors. But we should not immediately put uh, is equal to zero and try to find out the BR dot uh, because uh, there is some trick over here. So the trick is also let's find out dh dot dt. So once you find out dh dot dt, it will be somewhat, somewhat clear to you. So now let's take a look at this uh, expression, okay? So if you look at these things, you also see that these appear, these terms also appear here, but with a different sign. So therefore, if you can take this minus common, so what you will end up with that, if you take the minus term common, so you will have uh, this minus over here, and the minus sign over here, and the bracket closes. So now you see, whatever inside the first bracket, is exactly the same expression over here, isn't it? K2 minus K3 minus K4. So by putting the steady state approximation, whenever we put this is equal to zero, so that means we can simply put whatever inside the bracket is equal to zero. So therefore, from this, we can immediately argue that therefore K1 Br2 is equal to K5 Br dot square. So therefore, it tells me the value of Br dot. So the value of Br dot should be is equal to uh, K1 divided by K5 multiplied by Br2. And we have this to the power of half and Br2 to the power of half. So, here comes the concentration of beer dot. So, very nicely we got, but just by following this expression. So, okay, so it reduced our work. So, we did not uh, get lost 
by trying to find the pure dot uh, without looking at the expression for uh, dh dot dt. So from again from here we also going to find the expression for h dot. So what we can going to do that this equation would get modified. So this since this is equal to zero, so I am writing this is equal to uh, is equal to. So I'm going to take the h dot common. So I end up something like this. Okay, and from then. I, I may find the value of h dot over here. So the concentration of h dot then becomes k2 br dot h2 divided by uh, k3 uh, so okay so once I take the h dot common so the k3 term should appear here. So uh, pardon me. So the, there will be the k3 term. So now we have a um, h dot common. So we have k3 br2 plus k4 h br. Okay. So therefore, once again, we get the value of h dot. So we are almost down there. So you see, we got the value of the two values of the two intermediates, h dot and real dot. So now this is the last step. We are going to plot those values over here, real dot, uh, h dot, and h dot. And let's see how it comes, okay? So let's clean the board and uh, try it out there. So uh, this is the expression for dh, br, dt, and now we are going to put in the values for h dot and br dot but here we don't at the beginning put the value for br dot directly because we want to make it simplified so therefore we started with putting the value for h dot the moment we put the values for h dot the expression becomes something like this and then therefore you see these two parts have common denominator so we now are going to add the, all the three terms now if we add all the three terms here you will see you have a k2 k3 terms plus k2 k4 terms all right and here we have a minus k2 k4 terms so if we add we will find out that those k2 k4 term will cancel each other out and those k2 k3 will be identical so two k2 k3 terms will make this twice k2 k3 br dot br2 h2 divided by the denominator now we are just there so we are at the final step so what do we do now so whatever you know, we had to prove we have to divide both the numerator and denominator by k3 multiplied by br2. So if we do that, uh, so the, and the denominator, this term is, becomes 1 plus this, okay? And then finally, at the final step, we put the value for br dot. So it becomes 2 k2 whole root over k1 by k5 multiplied by root over br2 multiplied by h2 divided by the entire denominator term. So hence, proved. Okay, so uh, it's your turn to practice it and make sure that you get that you get this part um, correctly. So now we come to the last part of the uh, tutor tutorial problem that was from tutorial one. Okay, so the tutorial one asked to asked you that how you can you evaluate these cons this constant particularly. So what should be your approach? Okay, so let's raise the board and let's pose the problem once again, this expression, and quickly discuss the answer. So, uh, this was the question from the last part of the previous tutorial, that was tutorial one. So the last question asked that this is the DHBR DT expression that we just have divided. So the question asks that what experimental procedure you would follow to find the constant, this one. Okay, so remember it asks you to describe an experiment or an experimental strategy. Okay, so what would be your uh, answer? All right, so if you uh, take a look at this expression, you see the denominator is one plus something like this, and we have some HBR concentration and divided by BR2. So the best way to approach this problem that, now if we consider that at 
t is equal to 0 or t tends to 0, that means at the very beginning, uh, the HBr concentration is basically 0. Okay. So, whenever we talk about the, at time t is equal to 0 or at uh, the time t tends to 0, this is the condition for initial rate. So, now from our uh, knowledge from the uh, methods of initial rate that we have studied for the determination of order and rate constant, that at when time t is equal to 0, so at that point, this concentration of Br2 would become Br0 and the concentration of H2 would become H2 naught. Okay. Uh, so let's write it like that. Yes. So uh, Br0 and H2 naught. Okay. So this is the initial concentration of Br0 and H2 naught. So at that point that then this entire expression would become so I can uh, call this entire constant as a new constant k prime then becomes uh, br naught to the power half h2 naught divided by so uh, since this h br is equal to 0 at t tends to 0 so this means this entire thing is 0 and this is 1 so this is 1 so basically uh, uh, this simply becomes something like that k prime br naught to the power half h2 naught so now we can simply apply the method of initial rate. So that means what we can do that we can run the reaction at different initial concentrations of Br0 and H2 naught. Okay. So uh, if we do that, so then from that method that I have already described, so from that it would be easier for us to find the uh, K uh, prime, or means you can easily evaluate the constant. All right, so uh, you may try the other way. Uh, many, many, so you may think of many other possible ways, but let me tell you, whatever you try, uh, this possibility would only appear to be correct. Okay, so uh, I hope uh, you find this uh, tutorial useful. And uh, there are other uh, problems uh, in between the lecture that I have shared with you for free radical chain reaction. Now you may try those as well. So for following the strategy, whatever we have used uh, for uh, the Gordon strain mechanism, uh, you can follow the same strategy and um, by following the other solved problems uh, from the tutorials. I'm sure you can. Uh, you will be ready to attempt any uh, of such questions from the simultaneous uh, reactions and the related numerical problems. Okay, so uh, we finish it here. So, and we will see you in the next video lecture or the next tutorial. Okay, so till then, goodbye.